Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today on the show, video I've been looking forward to. It's on the uh, CGS Group Helios QD556 suppressor. It's a mouthful. We'll probably just shorten that to uh, the Helios, right? It's a suppressor that, frankly, I think is still a little bit on the underground. What I mean by that is I don't feel like a lot of people really know about it yet. And I feel that way because as, you know, over the past, uh, I don't know, maybe three months or something of having the suppressor, as I've been in conversations with people, I've been like, hey, you ever heard of this thing? And very few people say yes, minus people that uh, get into the Pew Science stuff, and we'll reference that later. But um, we'll get into that. Before we do all that, let's get out the, uh, the admin bullshit, which is you're here. The subscribe button is right there. Maybe you've already clicked that but maybe you haven't clicked the little bell notification to tell you when we actually post up new videos. So you should do that. You know what you should also do? You should leave a comment. You know why? Because algorithms are a real thing. Algorithms, right? If you comment, it helps out the algorithm. It makes us do better and all that good jazz, right? Um, uh, Patreon. Look, I'm just going to kind of get down to the point of this. We'll take your money. Okay, we'll take your money. Uh, we don't have any issue with it. I have no moral qualms about taking your money. Is there a minimum? Not really, but a thousand's recommended per month. That's not annual, that's per month. Um, you can go to more of a weekly plan, which would be like 400 a week. Totally fine with us. Do you get a lot of extra content? You get some, and you're going to get some cool stuff that we've got upcoming. But mostly it's a thank you because, hey, I don't know if you thought about this, this channel's free. We don't really charge or ask you for much. About the only other thing that we ask you for is, hey, look, if you are ever in the real estate market, curveball, we need like a little tire screech sound effect there. You're like, the fuck did he just say real estate for? Uh, that's correct. Believe it or not, the 1911 Syndicate is a real estate company and we operate a lot of different places. And frankly, the places that we don't operate, we can operate. We just haven't yet because there hasn't been a demand for it. So, hey, look, most of our clients, military, law enforcement, all kinds of shit like that. Go to 1911syndicate.com. You can check it out. And uh, best thing to do, send us a message and we'll figure out how we can help. Last thing on the suppressor itself, um, no favors done our way on this. Paid paid for it, got it through Silencer Shop, um, which is not a plug for them, because again, paid for it, but that is where I got it from. Um, so again, no favors done on that, bought and paid for, so I get to be as ruthless as I possibly want on this review, which I think we will steer clear of that for the most part. Now, <clears throat> the background on this, the CGS Helios, this was my pick for our end of the world suppressor, okay? Disclaimer on that, because I know people are going to go, well, what about Surefire? And what about Dead Air? They're all great. They're all great. To, well, they're not all great, but those two are great. There's a lot of great options out there. But this is an entertainment show, and we've got to bring you new and exciting products to talk about. So for our apocalypse into the world rifle build, which would be this bad boy right here, as you would have seen on probably, I don't know, last week's video when the review on the gun itself came out. This is sort of the one gun to do as many things as you can. And for that, I chose the CGS Helios, and we will talk about why that is. Um, to do justice to this one, I think we have to get into a little bit of background because CGS, for many of you, is going to be a company that you're a bit less familiar with. So let's talk a little bit about sort of how they came around. So, that's why Jake has notes, everyone. So they came around with the Pandora firing device. Basically, this is a way to set off um, like explosive uh, breach charges when uh, doing some sort of CQB or needing to breach through a door of a structure or something like that. Now, that Pandora device, which was uh, came around in 2014, it is very commonly used now, used by a lot of special operations, uh, you know, teams and different things like that. It's kind of become a uh, widely adopted way to set off uh, breach charges when doing assaults and things like that. So that's how CGS got their start. Then they started getting into suppressors in 2017. First, they came out with the Hyperion 762, and then um, we'll say a soft Special Operations Forces entity approached CGS with the idea for a suppressor for shorty 
5.56 guns, okay? That request then spawned into the Helios, which essentially was a suppressor that was made for 249s, aka a saw. So that's a bit interesting, right? This suppressor was never really made primarily to go on ARs like this. It was made to go on fucking machine guns, right? And you know what that means? It's got to be tough. It's got to be really tough, actually, because extended full auto fire, that's going to abuse the shit and it's going to show you any failure points in that suppressor, right? So that was the request. Um, the, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so the, yes, there had been other suppressors for 249s, um, to my understanding, which is not that much, but to my understanding, none of them worked great and had some issues, so there, there was a bit of a void in that market. So really what you got with the Helios is it's based on the Hyperion, the Hyperion 762, which was their first suppressor, but with a QD option, which we will get into, and with some strategic beefiness in the right places, which I like to think that people say about me, neither here nor there, um, but strategic beefiness in the right places so that it could withstand that sort of abuse that it would take on a 249. Uh, da, 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 da. And while designed for 249s, it actually has a larger bore diameter. So the uh, can is actually, while functions phenomenally well on 5.56, not actually really made for 5.56. Um, it will, it is a, a 30 cal can, so it will take larger rounds as well. And that's interesting because what they found was with the larger bore diameter, one, it wound up sounding great the way that they designed it, um, and it does. I can assure you it's a great sounding suppressor, but also it helped to, um, you know, kind of mitigate some of the issues of firing shorty 5.56 guns where that round's going to be a little bit more unstable, therefore it may be increasing the risk of a baffle strike or in-cap strike or something like that. So um, with that larger diameter, kind of an insurance policy on shorty 5.56 guns. Now, as we talk about suppressors, and I'm going to try to kind of make this a norm as we do suppressor reviews, what you have to understand for many of you who watch this channel, you're super into shooting suppressed and you know everything that I'm telling you right now. For those of you who are a little bit newer and we try to welcome new people into the uh, shooting and, and gun culture on this channel, this is a, a welcoming place where we hope you can come and, and kind of find a little home to learn some stuff. What you have to understand about suppressors is it's not just about how quiet is it, because if you've never the only thing that you're ever really going to fire where you go that's movie quiet is a like a su suppressed 22 with subs in it or something. Subsonic ammo. Sorry for the code there. Uh, 300 blackout suppressed with subsonic ammo. Also definitely going to fucking blow your mind. Same thing with 9mm. But generally speaking, shooting suppressed weapons is loud. And it's almost quite disappointing the first time you hear it because you're like, well, that isn't pleasant at all. And you're like, it's not pleasant it's meant to be ear safe but also do a lot of different things so what you have to understand with suppressors is look sound yes it is important but sometimes sound can be as simple inside of professional communities as simple as look i'm trying to have our team's rifle sound different and unique so that i can tell the difference between my guys are shooting versus someone shooting at us because that's an unsuppressed AK-47 versus I can clearly tell the difference between that and a suppressed M4, right? So you have to understand what we mean by sound. Weight, also a consideration. Length, also a consideration, right? Obviously the best sound suppression and the shortest package, that's kind of the ideal. It gets a little bit tricky depending on barrel lengths, all that kind of stuff. Flash reduction is a huge point amongst the professional communities that use suppressors. Look, sound and flash suppression are critically important, right? So flash. Impact on cyclic rate, like how much extra abuse is running the suppressor gonna have on your gun? Gas to the face, guess what? Gas to the face kinda sucks. And guess what, if you're a lefty, it sucks a lot more. So the less gas that you can be sucking in, one, it's more pleasant, less likely to have your eyes and shit like that tear up, but also less toxic, you know, there are, you know, long-term hazards of breathing in 
extended heavy amounts of the toxic fumes that, that would come back from suppressors. Don't everyone go freak out, but I'm saying, hey, if you're shooting, you know, 50,000 rounds a year suppressed, might want to get checked out. You know what I'm saying? Um, adapt, you know, ability to clean it. Although, frankly, I'm never cleaning suppressors and uh, future adaptability to new products that the company might come out with. Right. So there's a lot of considerations that go into suppressors. I will tell you this, if you want a deep dive in terms of like, how does it actually sound? Give me all the data and the metrics. You're on the wrong channel where you're going to want to go is to a place called Pew Science. And I don't believe that Jay at Pew Science actually puts out any videos to my understanding. I believe it's all um, written reviews with data where he gets, he's our best, uh, it, it's the best that we've got in terms of really getting into the science of suppressors and how do they sound and uh it's way too nerdy for me it's very good stuff if you're into that kind of stuff it's too much for me it doesn't mean anything to me i'm if you want the extent of how much that i test the sound well that would be jake shot without ear protection on and here's how it sounds to me just know that's the kind of review that you are in right now my friend so take you on a little bit of a tour as stated the two or the uh the helios qd version that that i've got here was made for machine guns okay and that means that durability tough raw toughness is of critical critical importance right and with that being of primary concern the material that this suppressor is made out of is something called 718 inconel now pay attention to what i said 718 inconel because you don't want to be like me for months saying in connell because you just sound like a moron unless you're talking to other morons in which they in case they're they're like dude in connell's fucking the shit right but if 718 inconel would be the proper term there what is 718 inconel basically it's like unobtainium toughness kind of shit i know it's used in like space shuttles or rockets or something like that someone from the science community could tell me which one of those it is but i know it's something to do with going to fucking space um so it's ungodly sort of unobtainium toughness which again if we're suppressing full auto fire from 249s that's going to be very very important now there are other suppressors that use 718 inconel one thing that you have to keep in mind with that is look it's an expensive material therefore yes it's going to be an expensive suppressor as would other suppressors using that material one of the most interesting things about this one is this thing right here is 3D printed. Huh? Like, super cool, right? When I heard that, I was like, 3D printed? I mean, that's super cool. Now, the point to that is that if this was a suppressor that was, all, you know, had different weld points, those weld points are failure points, right? As the suppressor is going to get super, super hot going through full auto fire and everything, weld points are a potential point of failure. So this could not have any welds on it. The only caveat to that will be the actual QD portion where it's att attaching to whatever the host platform is. Um, beyond that, the suppressor is 3D printed minus the end cap and we will talk about that. But super, super cool, right? Like that's cool science shit and, uh, and, and I like it. As discussed, hey, look, this was designed for 5.56, but it is a 30 cal can, so you can run a lot of different calibers through it, not just on your AR. Six and a half inches without the QD. With the QD, depending on what kind of QD solution that you're running, and we'll get into this in a second, um, you are gonna get a fairly long suppressor. So, you know, as you will see now, it looks, pretty beefy and like it's a pretty long suppressor and in this configuration it is if you took off all the qd stuff and just ran it direct thread it's going to feel like any other normal uh standard length suppressor 19 ounces so it is going to be heavy and that's uh without the qd stuff so once all said and done like look you're going to have a fairly long and fairly heavy package right a goal to which many of us strive sorry guys couldn't you know you can't help it sometimes. You just, you know, you wind up in the wilderness and fucking like, shit happens, you know. Um, full auto rated, duh, of course, made for saws. Uh, no barrel restrictions, lifetime warranty. 
couple things that it comes with, and we are going to have to loop in some B-roll here from when we're back at the truck, because I did not want to haul the case up here. Comes with a nice case. Now, anyone who knows me, you will know I'm a sucker for this. You take me to a nice shrimp scampi dinner, I'm yours, right? Do whatever you want with me. I'm the same way with guns. The gun, the optic, the suppressor, fucking whatever it is, if it comes with a nice case, eh, you, you know, you'll win me. It's like giving me a couple glasses of wine, you know? It's like, yeah, you just... You loosen, you loosen me up. I'm a little bit more, you know, vulnerable, and I like your shit a little bit better. Um, man, I just really set myself up for all kinds of bullshit in these videos, don't I? Um, now, it comes with a few other things. One, it comes with a couple different direct thread inserts. It's going to come with a half by 28. It's going to come for a uh, 5 eighths by 24. So basically, it's coming with direct thread inserts for 5.56 five, and, and 7.62. Now, I'm telling you all this because you have to understand, again, it's an expensive suppressor, but you also get a lot of shit with that. It's only a matter of time, everyone, before this branch breaks today. Jake's gun winds up completely soaked in the snow. Bear with me, everyone. Two pages of notes for this one. So it comes with two different direct thread inserts. So if you said, I don't care about the QD, I just wanted to run it as a direct thread suppressor, if you were gonna throw it on a bolt gun or do more precision oriented shit, or if you just wanted to run it direct thread on your AR, that's totally fine. The, um, what's cool is, and we'll show this here, is that the direct thread inserts actually have like a built-in flash hider, which I find very cool. So essentially, look, if you, took off the um, so if you took off the muzzle device on this gun and you were just gonna run this as a direct thread suppressor um, you're gonna need the direct thread insert so basically you would direct thread that um, insert onto your barrel now if you didn't have the suppressor attach but you just had on the direct thread insert, on the end of that direct thread insert, there's actually a flash hider. Why would you be in that situation where that's what you've got? I don't know, but it's a nice feature, the fact that, look, essentially I could be running a direct thread can, but if I had to, say, fuck the suppressor, or something went wrong or whatever, and I just left the direct thread insert, essentially I have a built-in flash hider muzzle device sort of thing, if you will. It's a cool feature. Um, I can't honestly tell you if any other companies do that. Not that I'm aware of, but um, I did not do that homework. But that is a nice feature, and to the best of my knowledge, unique to CGS. Uh, it comes with two... I'm just going to kind of lean back. Everyone get comfortable. Um, it comes with uh, two different end caps. Well, I was going to stay comfortable, but now i got to... Between the legs. comes with two different end caps. So... At the front of this, right now, you will notice uh, I've got the, um, you know, like the fully sealed welded end cap. And what that's for is basically maximum sound suppression. You want your suppressor to sound as good as possible? Cool. You're going to want to use the sealed up end cap. That's going to get you more gas back in your face. It's going to get you a more quiet gun. Um, but what's cool is if you wanted to, basically you just unscrew that end cap and it comes with a vented front cap. You would use that vented front cap if you either wanted uh, less gas back in your face, if you um, you know, had some sort of risk where you'd just been breathing in too much toxic gas, but you still needed to run a suppressor, it would be good for that. Or if you just had a super overgassed host platform that you're shooting from, the vented front cap would be good. Uh, you're gonna, you have those benefits. The trade-off, of course, is it's gonna be a lot louder because, you know, some of that is gonna be coming out of the, noise is gonna be coming out of the, in the front cap. So, hey, look, it's all trade-offs. My point, really, is that I like that they offer that. Frankly, haven't even shot the vented front cap because it's just not what I wanted the suppressor to be. But I do like that they include that. And again, if I had a end cap strike or something like that, hey, at least I got a backup. I'll get them to ship me a new one, but at least I do have another end cap if it came down to it. Uh, da, 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 da. So it also comes with this little adapter ring. So you will notice on the uh, 
basically at the bottom of the suppressor here, there's gonna be two things. There's gonna be the dead air chemo system that's right here, but then basically you've got suppressor, you've got QD host attachment from CGS, and then you have the actual QD system that you're choosing to use. So if you just look at this chunk right here, basically this little adapter plate, this is what you thread into the suppressor, and then into that is where you thread in your QD mount. Um, the con of this, and it'd probably be about my only ding on the suppressor, is that it adds a lot of length. By the time you add the chemo on top of the little QD host platform from CGS there, you're adding, I'm gonna guess that's inch and a half a length to the suppressor. So instead of being like six and a half, now you got about an eight inch suppressor. There are, again, different uh, QD systems that you can add to this. I'm a bit partial to dead air stuff and it's what I uh, frequently run and how my guns are set up so it made sense for this. You can, I will tell you, if you got a little creative and you wanted to run dead air stuff, basically what you could do this is gonna be a little bit code if you're not into dead air stuff. For those of you that are, know that this is pretty damn cool. Basically, you could run a key micro break. Yeah, sorry, key micro break on your rifle. And then basically the chemo you could use without the little adapter plate from CGS. So essentially, you could shorten this down by about half back here, getting rid of the little adapter plate from CGS and use dead air chemo, but you gotta use a key micro break. It's cool and it does shorten this up a little bit. Aesthetically looks nice, even though I think this looks pretty cool. Um, da, 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 da. As previously stated, it's a pricey can. How much? MSRP is $1,529. So you got a $1,500 suppressor. Silencer shop price $1,379. I'm telling you that because Silencer Shop is one of like two dealers for CGS. So there's not a lot of places that uh, carry it. If you know of other places that do, by all means, tag them. This is not a Silencer Shop plug. Um, it's just that's the only place that I really know of. And I know that there's one more uh, that do carry these, even though availability might get a little tight, but don't quote me on that. So even though 13, you know, 80 is kind of the street price, they're expensive, but it's expensive because of the material used and also all the shit that it comes with, right? Two different end caps, two different direct thread inserts, a nice case, which look, frankly, when you're transporting shit and it's bouncing around the back of your truck, I like having a nice Pelican case that I can throw all this shit in. The uh, little QD adapter system, it, you know, look, it comes with a lot of stuff. I personally think that the price is justified. That's just me though. Pros and cons as we kind of wrap it up here. Pros, sounds awesome. It's an awesome sounding can. I know at a time, this was the most quiet 5.56 suppressor that Pew Science had done a review and all their data on. I believe there might have been one that came out since then that they tested that they found to be a little bit more quiet. Don't quote me on that. I think that's what I heard. But from my shooter's perspective, it sounds awesome. Behind the gun, uh, obviously it's gonna be the most loud, especially me as a lefty, I'm breathing in more gas and my face is on the wrong side of the gun in terms of reducing some of that noise because just because I'm right by the ejection port. But um, I mean, even if you're 10 feet away and someone's firing this, you're like, man, I mean, that sounds incredible once you're just slightly off the firing line. So it does sound phenomenal. Excellent sounding suppressor. Another pro, the serial number ring can basically be removed and then welded onto another core. So if you did have some issue where something went wrong or you had some baffle strike or, or whatever, whatever happened, right? Essentially, the portion that's serialized could be swapped onto another core. And that's a big pro when it comes to NFA, well, suppressors specifically, is that like, hey, if something went wrong, did this thing that I just waited nine months and $200 for, am I shit out of luck? The answer with this would be no. We take your serial number, we attach it to a new core. Big benefit, some other companies do that, but it is something that I'm a, a big fan of. Uh, gas to the face, pretty pretty, pretty good. Um, none of them are gonna be great. Again, I'm not running this with the vented front cap, I'm running it with the solid one. It's, it's pretty good. Look, none of them are great. And again, I'm a lefty, so I'm kind of just shit out of luck. But um, gas to the face is pretty good. I'd say it's better than some. 
obviously not as good as something like an OSS, but it's a, it's a different, it's not apples to apples, you know, it's just not the same shit. Durability, one of the big pros, of course, just the fact that it's, you know, going to be ungodly tough and you're probably never going to kill that thing. And I will tell you, aesthetically, I find it to be very cool looking. I think it's a very cool looking uh, suppressor. It's a bit odd looking. And when you first see it, there's a little bit of a period where you're kind of judging it and figuring out, I like the way that looks or does it look clunky? Like, I've come to quite enjoy the aesthetics of it. That's just me, though. On the cons list, I've got heavy. It is heavy. There's no way around that. And they would be the first to admit that, I think. Look, it's a heavy suppressor. And because of that, well, and then the length once the uh, QD is added. So the weight and then the length. What you're really, in my opinion here, what you're dealing with is a suppressor where you got to go, look, what is the maximum length gun that I'm going to want to run this on? For me, 12.5 is about the sweet spot. Any more than that, and it's just going to start to get a little lengthy. You know, at 12.5, I go, okay, cool. I don't feel it's uh, like obtrusive and obnoxious. I don't want to throw it on a 14.5 though. I can tell you that. On a 14.5, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm out. It's just too much. I know Chris in the uh, chest rigs video, I think maybe it was on the Tracer Tactical video, he had this on a 16 inch Knight's gun and it's just like comically long. But to me, I think, hey, look, I've run it on 10.5s, 11.5s, and 12.5s, and it runs phenomenal on all those. And to me, those are the links where that thing really shines. For a full-length gun, I'd get a K-Can, personally. K, Kurt, short, suppressor. Um, and obviously, hey, another con would be on top of the already expensive price tag, you're going to need to get some sort of QD system, so you just got to factor that in, whether that's Dead Air Chemo or name your, name your platform, right? So... It, again, this was a cool review for me to do. It was the best way I can describe it. It, it was like a, occasionally, you know, you get those little glimpses where it's like you get the peek behind the corner at like, oh, that's, the, you, you know, have you ever played that game with your friends where you're like, man, I wonder what kind of cool stuff they're working on behind like the real high level, like military special operations, CIA, yada, 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 it, like, and you go, we all kind of play that game, go, I wonder what they got that they're working on. And you go, this is that kind of shit where you go, this was never really made for us. Like, it's a peek behind a curtain that we frankly rarely get to have. Like, this was never made for us to really get as civilians. It was made for, like, door kickers doing shit with machine guns. And it's like, we just happen to be kind of uh, fortunate to be in a position where we can, you know, perfectly legally own these with $200 and a long wait time thanks to the ATF. So um, it's cool and I think that's what makes it a bit unique and maybe that's why I like it a little bit is because it's like, I feel like I'm getting to peek behind that curtain and I like that because we don't really get to do that that often. So that's my two cents, phenomenal suppressor, very little negative to say other than like, sure, it's gonna be a little heavy, a little long, a little expensive, but you just gotta know that going in, you know? Otherwise, phenomenal, uh, love it, sounds great, all that good jazz. That is my end of the world suppressor for my apocalypse build. <sighs> all right, boys and girls, um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, trying to stay positive in the comments. I know some of you will say some bullshit, but welcome to the internet. It's 2021, so say whatever bullshit you like, everyone. Hope you have a great day, and uh, take care. Interesting product. It's been, frankly, one of those times where it's been, fu fuck you, I'm starting over. I'm saying fuck you to me, but I'm starting over. Okay. Came out like I was saying fuck you to you. I was saying fuck you to me, but I didn't like any of that. It's all terrible. end of the world light and for that end of the world light i chose the cloud defensive rain